Our last speaker is John Paradis. Easy, easy. Great, great group of speakers, lots of friends that I uh, would like to spend more time with, but our jobs and our careers seem to get in the way. Michelle and Michaela, uh, just talking about great varieties. What would I be to Matt and a little bit of a uh, man? A lot of ten, a lot of ten. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I'm here to speak today about developing a wine culture in British Columbia. And on the surface, we have some 200 wineries in BC, and we have what seemingly is a vibrant wine culture in what we do. But underneath that, we have a soporific infrastructure that government has not kept up with, especially with our social and cultural changes that's happened uh, around the world, but specifically in British Columbia over the last 25 years or 27 that I've been in the business. Let's give you a couple of examples. We have in this province a wine auction system. What does that mean? From the charitable level, we had the Belfry Theatre in Victoria uh, sillily apply for a special occasion license to hold a wine auction. BC Liquor Control and Licensing said, no, you're not allowed to have that. They lost $20,000. This is a major blow to a small theater company. Um, having no wine auctions affects charitable giving. It takes, takes a lot of pressure off the government. In places, and supposedly Vancouver, British Columbia is a world-class city, but in other places like Hong Kong, Paris, Moscow, London, Los Angeles, New York, Florida, oh, Alberta has wine auctions, and so does the Liquor Board in Ontario, and we have none here. In Napa Valley, the Napa Valley wine auction raises $10 million for local charities. The BC wine industry, in their submission to uh, John Yap, all they said was keep the ad valorem under 23% markup, and that's it. There is no BC wine auction. What do I mean by that? All the BC wineries getting together, like in Napa Valley and in Sonoma, and a little place called France called the Hospice de Bone, which started in 1415, um, to bottle special bottles of wine that in Napa Valley go for not tens of thousands of dollars, but for hundreds of thousands of dollars. People travel all over the world to specifically visit Napa Valley, attend the auction, eat at Meadowood, eat in the restaurants, stay in the hotels, fly in and rent cars. We have none of that here. Private wine stores cannot buy and sell wine cellars. I can tell you right now, there is significant business that's being done on the black market of buying and selling wine. Willow Park in Alberta, LCBO in Ontario, all have wine auctions. k &L Wine Merchants buys and sells wine online in their store. We can't do that here. Why can't we make BC an international or at least a Canada-wide destination place for wine auctions? You young people in the audience will never get to taste old Bordeaux because of our laws. Our policies inhibit creativity, inhibit jobs, and get people to move away. Specifically, James Kluwer is a master of wine. He's in California. Let's look at liquidity winery in Okanagan Falls. When I spoke to Ian in the summertime, he had waited 14 months to get final approval for liquor licensing. He's only invested $9 million. Still to this day. Tim, has he got approval yet? No. He called liquor licensing up, spoke to spoke to someone at liquor licensing and said, let me see. You're behind. People have told you to cut back on your staff, yet if you stamp those approvals, revenues would be coming in. Yes, well, why don't you hire people? We've been told to cut back. Classic. Larry, Curley, and Noah talking to each other.
What are my friends? Let me get back to the liquidity. We have, in this province, no secondary tasting rooms. What does that mean? In Woodenville, McMinnville, and Walla Walla, when I first started going there 20 years ago sourcing wine, those towns were dead. Walla Walla, I remember sage brushes, like you would see in a John Wayne movie, went across the main street. The Whitman Ho the Marcus Whitman Hotel, which was built around in the early 1900s, was literally boarded up. Today, Walla Walla, like Woodenville, but Walla Walla has 177 wineries. Why? And the towns are thriving. Why? Secondary tasting rooms. Woodenville, the state of Washington, realized that the market is in Seattle, but the grapes are grown on the other side of the Cascades. It's pretty geography 101, but um, hopefully our politicians will learn that here. So what they did is they developed the Woodenville Wine Route. And when I, again, when I first started going there, I was kind of like going to Langley in the 1960s. Dark, no street lights, industrial, always lost. One egregious pub on the corner that's still there. Today, there's roundabouts, art galleries, bookstores, tasting rooms, and people from BC that go down to Woodenville for the weekend because they've marketed it up here. We've done nothing of the sort here. Okanagan Falls would be a great place to have secondary tasting rooms between Liquidity and Meyer and Synchro Mesh, it would be a destination place. I heard, speaking to someone in Okanagan Falls and the soil of some of the city town, the town planners and councilors don't want it. I, I can't believe that. That is, just, that is just a lack of forward thinking. Wine bars, we really don't have any here. I emailed the former general manager of liquor licensing was having a beer with actually a friend in Napa Valley, just got a big buyout and uh, from a large company wanted to come up to Vancouver and open a wine bar. I said, mate, don't waste your time. So I emailed the general manager and I said, what's the process of opening a wine bar? She got back to me and said, basically, it's a liquor primary license. You know, food primary, as most of you know, Basically, seven to 12 months of soft costs, paperwork, plebiscites, canvassing the neighborhood, plus getting the city to approve on it. So basically, you have to rent a spot, pay rent on it, or have someone in there, month to month lease, or pay rent on it while it's vacant, while you wait a year. You're looking at, for a 40 seat wine bar, $250,000 soft costs before you get your doors open. Guess what? He's not up here. Investment gone. And if you think that's an isolated incident, it's not. It happens all the time on a day to day basis. So we still have that no dating boots, ladies and escort entrance, gentlemen entrance mentality. We haven't kept up, kept up with modern times. Lastly, I spoke to a couple years ago the manager of Firefly. Phone me up, scared, in a tizzy. Why? Well, he has an automatic machine. Liquor licensing, of course, living in Victoria, a thriving metropolis in Victoria, with feet on the street in Vancouver, know exactly what's going on in the modern world. He came in and said, You have to serve wine out of plastic glasses, you have to pour your wine out at the end of the night, and customers can't press the button just serve one else. And he said he's gonna come back. So what I did is I, I got on the phone, phoned a couple people I know, and next thing you know it was the Vancouver Sun, and he never came back. Point being though, we still have no policy on it. These these enomatic or by the glass machines are in small towns, London, Paris, San Francisco, Seattle, and riots are happening in the street as we speak because we have animatic machines. <laughs> Again, a classic example of the government not keeping up with modern times. I had a list, and I had to make it.
but uh, a little bit smaller. Oh, I think I could go. Oh, one last thing. Ah, Bart on the Beach. I was approached a year ago to sponsor a uh, sparkling wine reception for Bart on the Beach. And I said, no, I can't do it because of our uh, antiquated rules and regulations. In the liquor policy review, Bart on the Beach has to go to the liquor store. I think 18 to 20 times apply for separate special occasion licenses for 175 different perform performances. If someone behind the counter wants to be a classic government bureaucrat and give them grief and interpret the rules differently, then they have to go and come back. Liquor licensing apparently has made some, uh, has been good to work with, but for God's sakes, this amount, this amount of rules that they have that prohibit people from the simple enjoyment of wine. Again, it's frustrating and costs us money. One last thing. Who's been to Bart on the Beach? Who likes the wine there? That's what I thought. Wouldn't it be cool if, as it could be Marquee, it could be Liberty, or everything wine, could open a mobile wine bar, pour some kick-ass wine from the Loire Valley of Languedoc, and enhance the wine community? That's far too progressive in this province. Lastly, I would implore you to help out Mark Hicken and Modernize Wine. It's, uh, get on their website, you just so wish to donate. Modernize Wine has been instrumental, about 50 to 60 percent of the full liquor review because the government has finally clued in that their policies their lack of direction for the wine industry, for wine culture, has cost us jobs and revenue. Thanks for listening.